Well, I wanted to ask uh, a little bit about uh, writing intuitively because some people could do it really well. Uh, I'm not one of them, although I, I aspire to be one. Um, how, I mean, are we talking, you don't have any kind of outline? Do you at least have some idea of where the ending is, some kind of goal that you're getting to? Um, I never know endings. I, I can't, I wish I knew the ending. I, I can't possibly figure out an ending when I start a book. I just can't. But I do have a couple of things. Um, um, I have usually the character, the situation that they're in right in the beginning of the story, what kind of world they're in, not in any, not in granular detail, but in a broad sense. And I kind of usually have a sense of the catalyst moment. You know, the thing that really changes everything and kind of launches the character into the second act of the book. Um, I do like thinking about structure in broad strokes. So I like thinking about, you know, the first act, the second act, the third act. Um, and I think, I think in order to write intuitively, you do need to have a sense of um, how stories work broadly. Um, because if you don't have that, you can go off on all sorts of tangents. And it's just it's not very fun for a reader to to read a story that doesn't have some kind of structure. Um, but having said that, I also don't hold myself to any structure in the beginning. I, I, I might have an idea of what's happening in the beginning and what this catalyst moment is going to be. But if it changes in the writing, I, I allow for that. I, I actually allow for anything to happen in the writing. I kind of write as though I'm dreaming. So if the characters are um, at one point, I don't know, if I find that the characters are suddenly underwater, I'll just go with it, like even if they, they weren't underwater before. Um, and obviously at, through revisions, I have to find, if I want to keep the underwater stuff, I need to figure out why these characters are underwater. Like I need to have a reason for it. But, but in the first, second, third draft, when I'm still trying to figure out the characters, what motivates them, what kind of world this is, and what kind of story I'm telling, I just allow for everything. I, 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 I don't kind of close off any possibility. Hmm. So, I mean, if, you're, if they are suddenly underwater, um, now, of course, you're, you're, you, you tend to write magical realism. Uh, so I, I can imagine they just magic themselves and they're fine underwater. Um, but if that weren't the case and they needed to get, you know, breathing apparatus, uh, scuba, uh, scuba gear, all that stuff, would you then stop to do research at any point or would you just keep going and do your research later? When is your research going to come in? So it's kind of dotted throughout. Um, but like you said, because I write fantasy, I don't write anything that um, I don't write like historical books that, that have to be very historically accurate or books that involve a lot of um, like scientific research or anything like that. So I, I'm always researching in a sense and I'm always gathering kind of like a magpie. I'm always gathering things that are interesting to me. Um, and they sometimes end up in a book, you know, kind of by just by osmosis or just not necessarily by me choosing for them to be there. Um, but yeah, so if the characters had to be underwater and they were having a conversation, I would definitely pause and kind of ask myself, why are they underwater? I don't, you know, what's going on here? But I would let myself write the scene. And then I usually let myself go all the way to the end of the draft. And then when I'm reading over, if that underwater scene is still there and if I, if it, if it pops up a few more times, I might ask myself, okay, why are the characters underwater? What's going on here? Like, what do, does, is the whole world underwater or is it, um, just one particular house that's underwater or is there like one is there like a character that needs to be some kind of aquatic creature or I don't know it's it's more like a question of sometimes when I'm drafting I feel like I'm leaving like a, a trail of breadcrumbs for myself and so then when I'm revising like after I do a first draft I'll go and read it and I'm kind of looking for that trail of breadcrumbs to figure out what the story is about and who these characters are and what this world is. So I might write a whole draft um, and there's just one underwater scene and maybe I decide I don't actually want this to be in this book and I'll take it out. But if the underwater thing keeps coming back then I might be like oh well maybe this book is supposed to be set underwater or maybe one of the characters lives underwater or maybe I don't know you know what I mean like it's yeah it's just me kind of figuring out my own brain. Yeah, but that's I mean, this is this is my own personal um, feelings coming in about how I work for because I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit more of a pantser, not 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 firm, 100 percent. But that it almost gives me heart palpitations to think, oh, my God, you're <laughs> going to rewrite the whole book uh, so that it's all underwater. What a tremendous amount of work. How many how many drafts are you doing? <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> it's not it's not the most efficient way of writing. It really isn't. Um, and I've tried to be more efficient. It, it is working out very well for you, as we're <laughs> going to talk about. We're, we're on book number two, but I'm sorry, continue. Yeah, so it, it's not the most efficient way. And so I've tried to be more efficient and I've tried to do, you know, um, detailed outlines and synopses and things like that. Um, but I always find if I do a really detailed outline, firstly, there's the issue of I don't actually know what the story is. So how can I write an outline of something that I don't know? And I know it sounds weird, but I, I don't I don't get ideas when I'm outlining. I get ideas when I'm actually in the writing, like in the flow of it. And I'm in the language. Um, very often something will happen in the language, like I'll just like smush two words together and then I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, Wonder Root Tree, that's a thing in this world, cool. And then later I have to figure out, oh, what is a Wonder Root Tree? Why is it called that? What does it look like and all of that? But it comes from the word, like out into the world, as opposed to me thinking, oh, I want a tree that floats. So I'm going to call it a Wonder Root Tree. Um, so yeah, so I don't know, it's not... It's just the way that my brain comes up with ideas, um, and and um, it's also the most fun way for me to write. So that's why I do it that way. But I don't I don't necessarily recommend, you know, writing <laughs> like if I could not write, um, you know, two hundred thousand words in order to find the forty thousand words that I actually need. That would be better. But at the same time, it's it's the way that my brain works. <laughs> It's, uh, I, I always uh, try and catch myself anytime I've, I've got a, a personal uh, moment of, oh, oh my God, that would not, not work well for me. But I keep, I always say that the moment I do this show long enough that I have two authors tell me, we always do this and we are successful every time. I'm going to stop the show and I'm just going to do that. And it has yet to happen because everybody works <laughs> a, a little bit differently. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So. So how many how many revisions are you going to uh, on a typical story? How many times are you taking 200,000 words down to 40? Um, well, I don't write drafts that are 200,000 words. I'm all meant 200,000 words in, in total, um, like over. But yeah, I might write. I mean, to be honest, I kind of lose track of how many drafts I write because I'm also quite disorganized. I'm not I'm not the most organized person. Um, so I just kind of throw myself into writing and I write until I figured something out and then sometimes I'll be kind of halfway in and I know that it's kind of wrong and I have to go back to the beginning and sometimes I get all the way to the end um, and there's some things I want to keep and other things I want to throw out so yeah it's anywhere from like five to 20 drafts of one story to figure out what the story actually is I don't think I've done more than 20 okay yeah, that's about where I'm at usually, somewhere 20 to 30, and I'm, you know, and I've got a nice outline too. <laughs> <So> <laughs> I don't think anybody avoids the pain of revision. <laughs> well, the pain and the joy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I once listened to this interview with Kelly Barnhill. I think it's the one on um, 88 Cups of Tea. And she talks about doing 45 drafts of The Girl Who Drank the Moon. Mm -hmm. Um. And yeah, forty-five drafts is that's that's a lot of that's a lot of drafts, I would say. So yeah, if if it works for Kelly Barnhill, then <laughs> you know, taste close. That's how we're all, we're all gonna have to do it. 